Favorite cricket ground? Sharjah. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Best cricketing memory? Four wickets against PNG in our first ODI series. <laughs> Hey there, Cricket Lovers. Welcome back to another episode here on the Reverse Scoop channel. And I have today joining me a really, really special guest. He is a USA cricket player currently right now uh, playing with Lee Words. He's been part of the, you know, different division leagues, uh, played, has played, you know, again, for USA cricket. I'm sure you can see by the title, Kareem Agor. Welcome on board, brother. How are you doing? Thank you for joining me. How's everything? Welcome on board. Thank you very much. I'm good, thank you. Of course, man. Thank you. So let's get right into it, Karima. Let's let's talk a little bit about your early cricketing journeys, right? Uh, how did you how did you get into cricket? What was it at the start? Um, you as a, as a young kid that you know you were uh, really attracted to cricket from a, from an early age. My dad used to well, my dad plays cricket, um, and he used to walk with me while I was young to the cricket field and stuff. So I grew up around cricket, and it just grew with me from an age where I'm still playing right now. Played with a few guys that play international cricket and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to make a way. Yeah, man. I mean, do you, did you have like role models that you looked up to in your early age, like from, you know, international players? Like who who were some of your role models, you know, that you looked up to? A batsman was Michael Clark and uh, a bowler was Daniel Vittori. Oh, man. Michael Clark and Daniel Vittori. Is that like a... Is that- that how you would describe your game as well, Karima? If you had to tell the viewers about Karima and and the player Karima, you know, to tell the world, what would that player be like? Will it be a combination of a Victoria and a Michael Clark? Yeah, I would say a bit. Uh, I'm not really a, a big <laughs> striker, but I, I, I can strike it. it a good distance. Clark wasn't Clark wasn't a ball striker, brother. He was he was a drive. I remember he was, yeah. was a elegant, you know, stroke maker. So yeah, stroke I, I've seen that in your game, bro. You've got that stroke. So, you know, I definitely see that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, you, you know, again, so, you know, obviously you've played in the 2019 ICC World Cricket Division League two tournaments. And, you know, you've you've obviously been at the top level. So what what is that like, Karima? Obviously going through the chains, you know, of your career, of your young career, right? Is you obviously, what's that journey like from obviously climbing up uh, effort and dedication that's required just to highlight from for any you know any younger viewers that may be watching or um, that are training and, and that may be in that position where they're trying to get to the next level well i played international cricket before i played in a handful of like listed games i didn't play any first class games it was like a new experience for me going into games where players know their game and know themselves so at that time i was still learning and trying to adapt and learn as much as possible from those players. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, you know, your your learning was essentially involved around absorbing routines and the disciplines of, of more experienced players just through your growth over time? Yeah, yeah. That was very new to me because, as I said, I, I didn't play any first-class games and I played like a handful of listed games. So building a routine and stuff like that, that was totally new to me and like I was just lost. So... That came like a learning experience for me. So I eventually built my own routine and stuff like that where I share with other players and stuff. So a good information awesome. to learn. That's cool, man. And once you got there, Karima, once you like were about to make your USA debut, for example, right? Like what was that feeling like? What did the achievement feel like? Obviously through the work that you had put in and performances right behind you. And and so what was that feeling like at that point when you made your debut, your national debut? Uh, feeling was very good. I grew up in the Caribbean, so I never had any knowledge about the U.S till I actually went into a camp and learned about a few things with them. It was very unexpected, but it was a like a good feeling because I wanted to play at the highest level. Try my best to hone my skills and see how far I could go. Yeah, absolutely. And I believe you played where did where did you debut? Was it in Sharjah, Karima, I believe? It was in Namibia after the the Namibia. tournament. Yeah, we played, uh, the last game that we played was our first international game against PNG, which we lost. You know, I, I remember talking to you off the, off the scene and you had mentioned something about uh, Sharjah being your favorite cricket ground. Uh, you have any story about, about that? Uh, nothing spectacular. It was just like the atmosphere. It wasn't really crowded where a lot of people was there, but it's the first time being in Dubai, first time being in a big stadium like that. The facility was good. The pitches were really good. Experiencing that was new for me. 
and I never really experienced another facility like that. Thanks. So like the, the, the Sharjah is probably still your top, right? I mean, you love playing there. So what's like, let's talk a little bit about some challenges, Karima, like through, throughout um, your career so far, right? So you want to discuss any type of challenges that you may you may have faced in the last, let's say, two years and getting to that U.S. debut, right? Before that, any challenges to, again, highlight for younger viewers that might face those same challenges to, to help them out and, and how you dealt with it, perhaps? At that time, I was going to college. I was working a part-time job, you know, because I just finished school. I wanted to help my parents pay my college fee and stuff. So I was going to college, working, and then still practicing. So it was like a routine stuff where I would work in the morning, go college in the late evening or practice between work and college. And I would do that for every day for maybe like, I think I did it for two years. Oh, wow, man. So, so that was some challenge. routine, huh? And, yeah. And then you had another challenge where um, in the Caribbean, you have a uh, cricket season and football season. So when it's football season, the same grounds that you would practice on while it's cricket season, a lot of football played be, has been played on those grounds. So there isn't really much facilities to practice. The grounds that they use for international games, uh, you know that they need money to upkeep those and stuff. So local players are not really allowed to go and use them as they please. Maybe if a tournament is coming up and they pick an Antigua team or a national team, they would allow us to use it as a team. But other than that, it's a bit challenging getting around between those two seasons. And even now, it's... um. Football season is running into cricket season, so a lot of players are having that challenges. Like a few weeks ago at my home club, Liberty Sports Club, Liberty Blackhawks is the team. We're actually, a lot of young players actually hitting balls on the basketball court because, you know, it's concrete and stuff. Building into the cricket season now, while, while the pitches have been prepared, that's when the transition will happen where practice will get onto those wickets. Thing, man so it's it's it seems like a challenge i mean here too right it's how much cricket can we get in and obviously challenges with the field and the weather i'm sure causes the amount of game time that you guys can get in so how do you do you guys do a lot of indoors as well how do you combat the game time with it are you guys do just doing like offside drills and stuff well in the u.s uh you know they have a winter season and that's i think probably the toughest season when you really want to improve your skills so other guys would choose indoors, but then with the indoors, they use a, a scheduling type of stuff where people would book lanes for maybe an hour, hour and a half. And, you know, there, there are a lot of guys that play like tape ball or softball cricket, and those guys would take up a lot of time. So those guys would book a lot of time in advance. So before you can even call and say, hey, I would like a, to book a lane for an hour, these guys would already tell you that, like, we already booked out for this time. Um, you'd have to call again, so that's one challenge. And then, other than the indoors being booked up outside, you have uh, astroturf and the brown matting, maybe green matting. You need help to like set them up. I think setting up is a big thing. If you don't have like four guys to help you pull it out and nail it down, and then you'd have to get bars, which I think bars are pretty easy to get in the US, but setting up and having guys to actually bowl to you and help you with your skills that's a, that's another challenge in the us also yeah so you need guys with you right to bowl to you if you're in a practice and you need them to do it for a couple of hours so obviously a big big challenge and you know for players that are just trying to train single handedly right and and you could be part of your club and there could be a bigger crew of it that's managing it and you know you get your game time in that way so there's other approaches but you know, you brought up soccer, um, Karima. So, like, you know, uh, I want to talk to you about, like, being a multi-sport athlete. Have you played any other sport besides cricket? Or what other sports did you grow up playing besides cricket? Uh, while I was younger, I used to play soccer, uh, what we call football in the Caribbean. I, I got I got a few hard tackles when I was younger. My mom said, hello, hello, you know, time to stop <laughs> this because you're getting injured, you know. So that's where I really stopped playing football. And then I yeah. actually just went into cricket alone. Interesting, man. Do you like recommend to again younger players to be multi sport athletes? Do you think there's transferable skills from other sports into into cricket? Yeah, if you're a multi sport athlete, that's very good because there may be one sport that you might not find that you would really like. But if you play like maybe three sports, you may like one in particular very much. So you may have the option that, okay, I, I can maybe go into this, put my all more into this than the rest. 
and it also helps with your fitness. what about like skip- um, so yeah like a lot of guys will play soccer and cricket in the caribbean and then you will find that those guys are pretty fit so oh yeah absolutely i totally agree man it's probably the best sport to stay fit it's football right the world football not american football as people yeah. would uh you know call it here no that's cool man that's really really cool i had a question i'm having a brain fart but you know let's let's get into a little bit about your thoughts on on cricket in the united states and the future of t20 cricket in particular you know major league had a successful year last year there are things starting to build the minor leagues infrastructure where do you see u.s cricket in particular going karima in the next like couple of years especially from like the league perspective i'm not talking like the usa cricket end but like league cricket major league cricket do you think that side of it will take off in the u.s yeah cricket is getting pretty big in the u.s um i think every year they, they add two two or more small small tournaments so people are getting aware of, of the sport because if you would go like maybe in the last two years or so if you would go in america and say oh i play cricket or somebody asks you what sport you're playing you tell them you play cricket they'd be like what's that is that similar to baseball but no if you tell them if they ask you what sport you play and you tell them cricket they are more familiar with it because it's been brought over a lot of the social media pages and stuff like that, even advertisements. Major League, um, I think that was a good success last year. Um, looking forward to see what happens this year. Minor League, same thing. As I said, there are at least two or more tournaments happening are being added to the roster every year within the US. So. I honestly think that it would get bigger just as long as they keep an infrastructure in place and continue to put information into it and help each other. Yeah. How much do you think needs to be focused like, like towards the actual grassroots level of cricket, Karima? And how much do you think needs to, obviously the structure needs to be built on infrastructure, right? Do you think it's uh, wiser to focus the, let's say, resources on an infrastructure of a minor league system and work down that way or maybe work from the other way around and focus on the grassroots get cricket in schools and get cricket in the other types of you know local facilities so it can grow organically what do you think uh, i think i think um getting cricket in schools especially in america would go to sport a lot more because um you find parents in the u.s are, a lot, are very supportive of their children no matter what sport they play so i think that is a big plus for cricket and while I was playing minor league at the start and stuff, I heard that it would be like a breeding ground for players to play major league. So once you perform in minor league, you would get a chance to play major league once you are up to the standard or perform. So as far as I know or uh, I can see, it's a good process. We just have to wait and see how they deal with it within the future to come. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. And do you think for like let's say high school baseball players that are playing baseball right now at the varsity level and, and trying to get to colleges, you think they would have some transferable skills to, to bring to cricket if they saw opportunities in cricket and, and they gave a shot at it? Do you think those players that are actual baseball athletes, you think they can transfer over and become pro cricket athletes as well? Yeah, because I, I think baseball is pretty similar to cricket. Once they have the mind that they're going to put in the work, professional cricketers put in, I don't see that there would be a problem, but... It would it will not be um easy to switch over from baseball to cricket as it would be easy to switch from cricket to baseball. So I just think it's the mindset you have towards it will make the difference. Absolutely, man, and and it's just obviously a lot of different te- technical aspects to the game, right? That differ so and the processes. But you brought up mindset, Karima. So I'm gonna talk. I want to ask you a little bit about mindset, right? Because obviously, going through you know a professional cricketer's journey, I mean. I'm sure you would, you know, say that you have to get tougher mentally, right? So, like, again, what some strategies or some advice for youngsters to, to you know, become mentally stronger, first of all, within game, during game, and obviously in their lives as well. Mental strength, how, well, how, can, how can they work on that type of a thing? A, a lot of new things that we do in sports are daily life. You may not feel, un- you may not feel comfortable, sorry. In those un- uncomfortable moments a time where you need to have a strong mind. So sometimes you would have a, a rough day at work, but because you have a strong mind, you would push you. you. Even at training, you may be having a rough time and then you'll be like, you know, buckle your head down and try and get through the day. 
So I just feel like those uncomfortable moments is what build a good mindset. Even getting out of your comfort zone. Still uncomfortable moments, but getting out of your comfort zone on purpose could actually help also. Yeah, there's no progress in comfort zones, right? You have to be in an uncomfortable position to have any type of progress in life. So that's a great you know, answer, man. I totally love it. And talk a little bit about your um, training and preparation as well, Kareem. I know you, you came from training today to have a chat with us. You had a, a long, tiring, grueling training session, as you were telling me before we went started recording. So what is your training like? What's your routine like? Preparation? What do you eat? You know, like how much, like what's, you know, what do you obviously stay up to with keep, keeping your fitness and everything? Uh, I try to... I will start with eating first. I try to eat as healthy as possible. It may not be the best at times, but I always try my best to stay healthy within the eating department. I normally go to the gym maybe four to five days a week. I would train at least four days a week, the least. When I get to the ground, I do my stretches. I may run a few laps, loosen up. And then when the coach is ready, he will lay out what he have for us to do for the day. And then it's just like we would feel, do feeling, batting, bowling, maybe drills, bowling drills or batting drills, depends on what the coach has planned out. And then maybe after the session, if time is left, I would normally do an extra, if it's extra running, extra core work, extra batting, extra bowling, I normally do extra. I always find myself doing a, a little more extra because... I find that doing little extra is not only just for the sport. It helps you through the day-to-day -day -day life. That also helps with mental strength. And then once you do extra, you may find a few guys ask you, what, what's your plan? And then they would come and join you also. So you have a, a group that would actually help you push along, even those long and hard days. Absolutely, man. And I'm sure like that's where like all the progress again is made, right? Like so... Again, being a spinner and, and, and being a, a batter, right? So let's talk about a little bit from a perspective of you, you know, working towards your spinning consistency and your line and length. How, like, what do you specifically, Karima, work on, right, within bowling? I think, again, off the, you know, radar, we were talking about you having long balls and long bowling sessions, I think three, four times a week. So how does that, again, impact your effectiveness and your, and your accuracy as well as you know how often do you do it is it every other day is it like do it one day take a day off and then do it next day what's like the process there i would call that personal work um extra work you can personal work slash extra work i normally do i normally bowl for 45 minutes to an hour that's spot bowling 15 minutes you know just going through my strides bowling make sure i'm warm and then once i'm warm with it at 10 15 minutes i would start a timer have a, have a lot of bars and have my markers to hit, try and hit them, see how much I can hit. And as the days goes by, I would make the markers smaller. Once I feel that I'm hitting my marks consistently, so I try and make it as small as possible and then try and hit that as well. So I'll do that maybe three, four times a week. We normally play games on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. So it's not all, that's why I said three, four times, mostly depending on how I'm feeling because, you know, your, your body get tight and, you know, you need help stretching and massages and stuff like that. So I would say three, four times a week. I do spot bowling for 45 to an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. Interesting. And how important is recovery and resting, Karima, as well, with all the things that you have to do and all the hard work that you put in and how important it is to obviously get that rest and recover your body for big games that might be around around the horizon or you know, and get ready for them i honestly think resting and recovering is the biggest part within an athlete's life because if you're not well rested you may get up in the morning and you know you may not feel like you want to participate in what you have planned or what you have in front of you eating well that's a part of recovery stretching drinking a lot of um fluids we normally do ice baths or use the beach so i honestly feel that it's a big part to play because you could get injured not being or not going through a nice proper recovery and feeling well rested 
Absolutely, man. Totally agree there. Again, guys, if you're just joining us, you know, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're having a conversation with Kareem Agor here going over his cricketing journey and, you know, his his goals and, and achievements in his young career so far. So, Karima, what's next for you? I know you've contracted with Lee Words Island right now, right? Or you're playing, um, I believe, from next month. What's the what's the uh, plan there? Yeah, I'm contracted with Lee Dance Hurricanes at the moment. Uh, we're preparing for the regional four-day competition in the Caribbean. We are listed to have seven games within this year. So my focus is just on preparation right now. Uh, we have maybe two and a half weeks or so of preparation. So just focus on preparation and get the mind right and see how much I can get in before the games begin. Is it T20s or is it like four-day games for the hur Hurricanes? Yeah, four four day games. Red four ball, day yeah. games. So long ball, man. Oh wow, you're gonna have that long ball four day, man. So uh, spinners for that example, right? In four days, how many overs are they expected to bowl in a day? Twenty, twenty five, I I'd assume. Ninety overs in a day. Well, no, one one bowler. I'm saying like you as a bowler. Oh, um, it like, actually depends. You would be expected you know, solely. Yeah. You know, you know, the fast bowlers get a lot of wickets. The spinners yeah. would come and clean up the rest. Um, so. I would say, yeah, around 25, 30 overs. It depends yeah. on how, 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 how the, other bowler, the other bowlers deal with the day. And in the long the ball, and in the long ball, Karima, what's your role? Like, what do you define it? Do you define it as like a container or are you a wicket taker? You know, because some spinners um, obviously in test cricket uh, can hold the line and hold the run rate and just dot, you know, economies and the other end gets the wicket or are you the guy who attacks and, and gets the wickets? I think it's in the situation of the game, depending on yeah. when I am calling. I think that I would know when to attack and when to hold an end. But I'm not really playing as a bowler in the red ball format. I'm more of a bowler in the white ball format. So I'm playing more as a batter. But if I'm calling, yeah, I'll surely do the job. Of course you will, man. I don't doubt it. Absolutely. Uh, I want to do the next segment with Karima on rapid fire rounds. So... Uh, again, if you guys are just joining us, don't forget to smash that subscribe button and we'll do this rapid fire round with Karima right now. So Karima, we're going to start this rapid fire round. Are you ready for this, man? Yeah. All right, let's do it, man. So favorite cricket ground? Sada. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Best cricketing memory? Four wickets against PNG in our first ODI series in Flo Florida. One food you can't live without? Pizza. Favorite music genre? Dancer. Most admired athlete outside of cricket? Roy Benjamin. Favorite movie? Creed. Not cricket, then what sport? I was a football. Dream vacation destination? The Maldives. Favorite book? Hustle Hard or Die Trying. One word to describe your playing style? Calm. All right. And the last one, man, hidden talent. Let the people know your secret. Come on. <laughs> I play video games a lot. All right. There you go. Now the world knows. <laughs> Karima is a gamer, guys. Didn't know that. And yeah, maybe I'll see you on a Call of Duty round, Karima. Oh, man. Almost every day. But every that's day. awesome. Man. Yeah, yeah. There you go, bud. There you go. So that's that was our rapid fire round with Karima. Yeah, guys. I mean, it's been an amazing conversation with Karima. Karima, you have any last words for, for the youth cricketers, young cricketers, aspiring cricketers that look up to you, man, your fans, your well wishers? You know, any message for them that you want to give them? Yeah, sure. I'm still playing cricket. I'm still going, even though y'all don't see me playing for the U.S. at the moment. Uh, I'm still training hard, still going to the gym, enjoying life. A coach told me, once you have life, you have a second chance to do anything you want. There's the opportunity. Go for it. Absolutely, man. Wow. Strong words from Karima there. And with that, I think, you know, we're going to end it. And Karima, thank you again so much for joining us, brother. And thank you again so much for your time and coming in and giving us this, uh, you know, exclusive interview, you know, for our viewers. And again, guys, if you're new to the channel, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon for more updates. And yeah, we'll bring on, you know, more guests in the near future. And we'll have, you know, chats just like this, like we, how we had with Karima. So stay tuned, guys. Nabil Khan and Karima Gore from The Reverse Scoop. Signing off. Have a great night, everybody.